You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. That looks like a good one. Does it? Well, it's hard to tell from here. As good as any, I guess. Ralph Wiggins Auto Wigwam. Doesn't sound like an Indian name. No, wait! What's the matter? There's another dealer down the block. Honey, I don't know if we can make it. Or the one across the street. Look, Henny Cuts Cut Rate Car Sales. I think I've heard of him. I haven't. We don't have much choice. This clutch is about to go. Turn in here, at the driveway. See it? Where? Past the billboard with the lights. Just in time. At least they're all on the same block. If we don't see what we want, we can walk to the next dealer. Sure, honey. Looks like this one's got a lot of cars, though. They're not very new. That's all right. Dollar for dollar, the best buy is always a used car. Is that what they say? That they do, young lady. That they do. <laughs> Hello. Howdy. Beautiful night, huh? Not too warm, not too cold. Out for a drive, were you? Saw my sign and couldn't resist, am I right? We're just looking. Sure, sure you are. I understand perfectly. A young couple like yourselves just get married, did you? It's been three months, six days, and five hours. I knew it. How could you tell? Does it show? Like a halo, little lady, around both your heads. Why, I can always spot newlyweds when you've been in the business as long as I have. Look all you want. You're entitled. Just don't take too long. I'll be closing up in a while. Of course, that ought to be more than enough time. Mr. Henneker. Yeah? Excuse me a minute. Another one of my satisfied customers. How do you start this thing? Give it another try. Are you sure this is the right key? Sure, I'm sure. Engine's clean, just gave it a tune-up. No extra charge. Something's wrong with it. No, no. Needs a little breaking in is all. New points and everything. There you go, Mr. Nolan. You got yourself a great deal. A honey from Hennecut. <laughs> Drive it in good health. Whoa, too much power for him. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. See anything you like, folks? This, as the banner over his lot proclaims, is Mr. Harvey Hennicutt, an expert on commerce and con jobs. A brash, bright, and larceny-loaded wheeler dealer who, when the good Lord passed out consciences, must have gone for a beer and missed his. And there are a couple of other important characters in our story beyond the young couple you've just met. One is a little old man and one is a Model A Ford, but not just any old man and not just any Model A. There's something very special about both of them. As a matter of fact, in a few minutes, they'll give Harvey Hennicutt a rare gift, something he's never experienced before. Exactly where they come from is conjecturable. But as to where they're headed, this much we know. All of them, and you, are on the threshold of the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story... The Whole Truth, starring Henry Rollins, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Well, what's your pleasure, folks? Got every kind of car you could imagine. We're just looking. That's all right, isn't it? Of course it is. That's what we want you to do. Nobody pushes you around here. No, sir. Around here, you can take your time. Pause, check, recheck, think, peruse, contemplate, wade through, thumb over, and dip into. At your leisure. Be my guest, folks. Thank you. We were thinking maybe a little coupe, you know, that doesn't cost too much. 
That's all we need. There's just the two of us. A compact, maybe. Something for a few hundred dollars down. As late a model as we can get. Late? You shock me, you know that? You know you shocked me just then? Oh, we're sorry. We didn't mean... You know why you shock me. I'll tell you why. It's because you've succumbed to the propaganda from every cement-headed clod up and down this street. They call it Dealer's Row, but that's all it is. Propaganda. They like to push the late models, don't they? Am I right or am I right? Well, we haven't been to any other dealers yet, but... Then you're lucky. They all do. And you know why they push the late models? No, I can't say that you I... You think it's because they're honest citizens? Upstanding, law-abiding churchgoers? Ha! Let me tell you something, young man. They push the late models because that's where the profit margin is. Plain and simple. I don't really know much about... I'll let you in on a trade secret. They'll cram those new babies down your gullet because they'd rather make a buck than a friend. Repeat customers, they don't know the concept. But that's what keeps a business going. A year, two years, five years down the road, friends are what counts. But these new car dealers, they'd rather fill their wallets with cash than fill their hearts with the fellowship of man. Or woman, as the case may be. You understand what I'm getting at. I can see it in your eyes. You're bright young people. We were just looking for transportation. We figured that the newer the car... New? Ha! <laughs> That's where you're completely wrong, where you've suddenly gone amiss. That's the fork in the road and it's headed you straight up a blind alley. You don't want a late model car, one of those new jobs. Oh, no. We don't? Not one of those rinky-dink jobs slapped together on an assembly line, covered with chintzy chrome and plastic or whatever they use now. Crazy designs, idiotic names, and no more workmanship than you can stick in a thimble. No. I'll tell you what you want. You want the craftsmanship that comes with age, the dependability of proven performance, the dignity of traditional engineering, the maturity. Well, this is what you've been looking for. Take a gander. It'll get you where you want to go, and it'll get you back home. You have my word on it. And just for a few dollars more, you can have that guarantee in writing. This one? But isn't it a little too old? Not at all. It's a classic. Kick the tires. Put your foot up on the bumper. Go on. You can't hurt it. Oh! What happened? My mechanic, he, uh, he just put a new grill on the front, so it'll look absolutely perfect. You can do that, you know, anytime. All parts interchangeable. He was just about to torque down the connecting bolt, but he, uh, well, he must have gone to get a different wrench. If you're gonna do a job, do it right, I always say. Maybe we should let him finish. Not to worry. Did you know that the original prototype of this car was a Mark II tank? Really? Oh, yeah. When you get on the freeway with this baby, everybody else, get out of the way. See where the gear shift is? That used to be a cannon. Now, why don't we sit down somewhere and talk turkey? My office is a good place, nice and private. I don't know. Well, I do, because this is the one you want, and this is the one you're going to get. I'll bend over backwards to make you a deal. When you drive it off this lot, you're going to feel so... So... Come on, honey. Huh? Where are you going? Well, if we could... I mean, maybe if we could look it over first and then see what else you've got. What else? Don't you know a good thing when you see it? This one will be gone by the time I close up tonight. Bargains don't last long on this lot. Here, check it over from the inside out. That's all right. No, I insist. Be my guest. Go on, slide in the front seat. Get the feel of it. Relish the luxury. Class like this doesn't come along every day. Hello. Be right with you, Grandpa. Come on, young fella. See how they built cars back when they knew how to build them. Well, if you say so. Come on, come on. You too, madam. Here, have a seat. Just slip right in. There we go. Park yourself in there and enjoy it to your heart's content. It does have a lot of room. Sure it does. Boy, oh boy, you know what you should have when you sit in a car like this? Moonlight and a bottle of good wine. To go with the music from the radio. This baby here has atmosphere, huh? But good. <laughs> Are you Mr. Hennecutt? Yeah! Relax a minute. Feel the magic. I'll be right back. How do you do? Well, that depends, Gramps. What do you have in mind? I wanted to bring you my car. So I see, so I see. Where'd you get it? Out of a museum? It's a genuine Model A, original factory stock. If you came here to park it, I'll charge you a nominal rate, but if you're here to sell it, you'll have to give me a minute so I can have a little laugh. 
Ha ha ha! There, I got that out of my system. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Any junk man, he'll give you 45 tops just to haul it away. The Smithsonian might beat that by a buck or two, but don't hold your breath. The parts alone are worth more than that. It's a collector's item. Well, then you better take it to a swap meet. I only deal in cars I can move. If you're thinking about a trade in, forget it. This here's what you call a white elephant. No, I wasn't thinking of buying another car. I thought you might need it. For what? It's a wonderful old car. Been in my family for years. They built them better in those days, I think. Ah, oh, Granddad, that's the line everyone falls for. The old rhubarb, the saw, the turkey that everybody and his brother's trying to pull on the open market. Cars were built better in the old days. Ha! In your dreams. You don't believe that. Let me tell you something. Ten years ago, even ten years, they didn't know how to build cars. Not like they have today. It's the new cars that sell. It's the new cars that run. It's the new cars that combine the genius of mind, muscle, and the assembly line. Modern factories, better technology. Look at this thing. Heavy old sheet metal, painted black. It's great if you're going to a funeral. I see. But, I tell you what I'm gonna do. Just because I like your face reminds me of my own grandfather, rest his soul. A man of dignity, down through his declining years until he died. Uh, rescuing a capsized boatload of people on the East River. Is that right? So, I can see my way clear to give you a 60 for it. I'll probably have to tear it down and sell it wheel by wheel, bolt by bolt to an antique dealer. Or the first itinerant junk man who comes around. But you caught me in a good mood. 60 I can go. Not a penny more. $60 cash? That's the offer. Take it or leave it. And I kinda need the money, but couldn't you make it 70 you try my patience, old friend, to the max. What does that mean? That means 60 is going, going, almost gone. No, please. Just in time. Sold. 60. Cash on the barrel head. Now, I tell you what you do. You go in that little office, I'll meet you there. Once you get your papers and your car registration together. Did I say car? Make that vehicle. I've got the papers right here. You do? Came prepared, huh? All right, then. Let's get this over with. Step into my office. Fifty, fifty-five, sixty. There. Did you sign the bill of sale? At the bottom of the page. Good, good. And the pink slip? On the back. Perfect. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Mr. Uh, Hennicutt. Mr. Hennicutt, of course. Here are the keys. Thank you. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Hennicutt. Yes? There is one other small item I ought to mention in the interests of full disclosure. Go ahead. It's haunted. Haunted? Hmm. You don't say. Oh, yes. Without a doubt. The car is quite haunted. It's been haunted ever since it came off the assembly line, and every single one of its owners can attest to that fact. Well, now, I don't suppose you'd mind telling me how it's haunted. Oh, you'll find out soon enough. I will, huh? Did you sign the back of this form? Yes. Right. Or how can I unhaunt it? Wouldn't want to miss a thing like that. There's only one way. And that is? You'll have to sell the car. Oh, sure. I think I can remember that. Well, Mr. Hennicutt, it's been a real pleasure doing business with you. Likewise. Watch your step going out. I think you may find that you have actually gotten the best of the bargain at that. My aged friend. You do me an incredible injustice. Our little transaction, haunted or otherwise, was my charity case for the day. You dwell on that, will you? Dwell on it. No, 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 Mr. Hennicutt. You dwell on it. And I rather think you will. Well, folks, what do you think? I think we'd like to get out now. Hmm? Oh. Oh, sure. I'll get the door for you. Slide this way. Ladies first. 
I don't know about the seat. It's not that comfortable. No? Maybe you were in the wrong position. I know you young folks like to snuggle up right next to each other, but the way you've got those bucket seats, of course you could adjust them, slide them any which way. How's the engine? The engine? Runs okay, does it? Oh, it... it runs. Definitely. Starts right up. How much is it? How... much? With the down payment. Minus the trade-in, of course. You do take trade-ins, don't you? Uh, sure. Sure I do. Take anything I can get. Hose it off, polish it up, and turn it right around. If it's too far gone, I wholesale it to this guy in New Jersey. What he does after that is none of my business. What? I mean, well, you understand. After that, it's not my worry. Of course, I cherry-pick them first. If some little old lady had it locked up in her garage, then it's worth more than Blue Book. Naturally, I don't tell her that. I beg your pardon? What am I saying? <clears throat> Sorry, lost track for a minute there. You... you got a trade-in, do you? Oh, yes. Over there, when we drove in, remember? Sure, I remember. Anybody get hurt in that accident? What? At least it's clean. Bobby washes it every weekend and waxes it once a month. Then if you like it so much, why get rid of it? Well, it does need a little work. I just don't know how much more money we should put into it. A little work? I heard you coming. Tranny shot. You need a long block plus new shocks. And those brakes? Sounds like fingernails on a blackboard. All right, then. Without the trade-in. Hmm? For the one you showed us, you don't have a price on the windshield. This car? Yeah, how much is it? It's... not for sale. Why not? Uh, well... I don't know. But it's the car we were just sitting in. Wine, music, atmosphere. Yeah, uh, sure. The one you were pushing so hard? You made it sound so nice. I know, but I guess... I'm not pushing it anymore. Something wrong with it? Are you kidding? It's a wreck! A rum-dum! But a minute ago, you said- I know what I said. But it hasn't got any points. It hasn't got any rings. It hasn't got any plugs. It eats gas like it owns every oil well in Texas. <coughs> Just joking, folks. <laughs> Don't know why I said that. But the tires. Now, the tires are... Uh, completely shot. Uh, Regrooved and painted black to look new. Plus the chassis bent. Got rolled so bad we had to weld the frame together from three junkers. So, could that cause a problem? I'll handle this, honey. All we want is something to get us around. Oh, it'll get you around. It'll get you around half a block and then it'll stop cold. You'll have to tow it in and the repairs will cost you double what you paid for it. It'll get to be a regular habit every third Thursday of the month. Well, in that case, what else have you got? What else? Oh, I... Uh, well... You must have something in our price range. Well, to tell you the truth, I... I haven't got anything worth the time it would take to show you. Say, what kind of place is this? Just what it looks like. Everything in this lot should be condemned. I got more lemons per square foot than a fruit grower in Salinas. Listen, kids, take my advice. What you ought to do is, you ought to hit one of the honest dealers. Somebody will stand behind his product. And remember, you get what you pay for. Find something you really like and make an offer. Start with 20% off the sticker price and don't drop below 10. Just don't come around here anymore for your own good. Okay, buddy, we'll do that. Come on, honey. What am I doing? Hey! Yes? If you really want to make a good deal... Let's walk over to Ralph Wiggins and see what he's got. Good idea. You mind if we leave our car here for a while? Why would I mind? I got about as much business tonight as a dentist in a graveyard. What in the... Damn, it got into me. Back to our feature, Wagons Ho, starring Fess Parker, Dan Blocker, Jonathan Harker, Chris Marker, and Iron Eyes Cody. Hey, boss. Huh? Oh, hi, Irv. What's up? Nothing. Just taking a break. Yeah, sorry I'm late. I was out at the junkyard trying to find a hubcap for that Chevy. I got two while I was at it. Good, good. So how's the action tonight? Everything's pretty quiet around here. Hey, Irv. Yeah? You wouldn't believe what I... Believe what? Nothing. 
Come on, I can take it. Ah, oh, what's the point? You won't believe me. Oh, that bad, huh? Live and learn, right, boss? Well, what do you want me to do tonight? Uh, stand on the corner and wave him in? Hey, I could put on that monkey suit again. Nah, it's too late. How about trying to move that old Essex? Move it is right. It's not going anywhere on its own. Knock it down a hundred. Tell everyone it's the last of its kind. Well, isn't it? That's right. It is. So you don't have to lie. <laughs> That'll be a first. But listen, you gotta keep that hood closed. When they can't see the engine for the rust, you gotta play a little hide-and-seek. What we got is a car that could have carried the French soldiers to the first battle of the Marne. <laughs> nice. I like that. Just don't go advertising the fact. And Irv, I want you to do something else. I want you to put a sign on the car that says it's for sale as is. No guarantees. You're joking. And while you're at it, open up both sides of the hood so they can get a look at what they're buying. You're not joking. Just do it. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, one question, though. Yeah? You want to sell it or keep it around for an heirloom? You're right, Irv. Why am I shooting my mouth off like this? Don't know what got into me. Very funny. I knew you were pulling my leg. Irv. Irv. Do I look all right to you? What did you have for dinner? Oh, this is nuts. The power of suggestion or something. What is? Some old gleep that sold me the Model A out there. Oh, yeah, I was wondering where that came from. What should we do, sell it off for parts? You know, there's a car club meets every month. Uh... He was real nutsy. Comes in here with a song and dance about a haunted car. Uh-huh. Did you get what I said? Haunted. Yeah, that's a new one. And I was stupid enough to stand there and listen to him. What I should have done was call up the booby hatch and reserve a rubber room for him. Uh, I get it. You had a little drinky, didn't you? Eh, just a little one, right? No, Irv, not a drop. I'm as sober as a judge. Then maybe that's the trouble. There's a bottle around here somewhere, boss. Later. Go on out in case anybody shows up. I gotta make a call. Sure, boss. Is that you, honey? Yeah, it's me. You're ever loving. Say, baby, about tonight. I'm gonna be a little late. Well, it's inventory time. Look, I told you about that. Sure I did. Oh yeah, the whole lot. Might run into the wee hours. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna be doing tonight is, I'm gonna be playing poker with the boys. And when I told you it was inventory time last month, I was playing poker with the boys then too. Honey, wait a minute, hold on, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I didn't mean that. No, don't wait up for me because Oh, this is nuts. I'm the one who needs a rubber room. Must be sick or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming down with something. Look, what I'm really going to be doing tonight is playing poker with the boys. Oh, strike that. I'll call you right back. What is this? I got no control over what comes out of my mouth. No control at all. I was just going to lock up the side gate. Good, good. You do that. Hey, boss, what's the matter? I mean, you don't look so good. Irv, I'm in the midst of a calamity. The old gleep I was telling you about, the one who said the Model A was haunted? Yeah? He was right. Whoever owns that car has to tell the truth. Irv, you dig what I'm saying? You ever hear of anything more ghastly? Me, Harvey Hennicutt. From now on, as long as I own that car, I don't have a choice. I have to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but... Morning, Earth. Oh, hi, boss. I wonder where you were. So I went ahead and opened up. Thanks. Thought I'd put that hubcap on the Chevy. It's not a perfect fit, though. Rim must be bent. Hey, I gotta jack it up and take the weight off. Be my guest. Something wrong? I gotta clean up. Boss. What happened? Looks like you didn't get much sleep. She wouldn't let me in the house. Had to sleep in my car. No kidding. Gee, that's rough. Just let me make some coffee and change my shirt. I got major aches and pains. You ever sleep in the back seat of a Buick? No, I can't say that I have. Oh, boss, uh, you got a message. Tell her I'm moving in with a friend for a while. That'll teach her. Sure, anything you say, only uh, that's not it. Some politician called. He's coming by to look at a car. Said he'd be here around noon. What politician? Uh, I wrote it down. Uh, here, uh, Grimmy or Grimby or something. Grimbly? Yeah, that's it. He's coming here. 
to get a car from me? Yeah, pretty neat, huh? Play your cards right and you can make a bundle. Oh boy. Tell me which ones and I'll polish them up. Now that's what I call bad timing. Why? We got a couple of hours. Sure we do. Something tells me this is going to be the hardest sale I ever made. How do? Let me get the door. Luther Grimblin. I know, sir. I recognize your face. You do, huh? Of course. My, uh, my associate told me you called. Honest Luther Grimbley. 30 years in politics, currently up for re-election. Alderman, 13th Ward. In honor, sir. What's your pleasure? Something special. For the St. Patrick's Day parade. I understand perfectly. Something out of the ordinary, like a nice classic Model A, for instance. Look at those lines. Beautiful, isn't it? Well, that depends. If you take 12 aspirin and shut your eyes tight, you might call it that. But in the cold light of day, son, that's a wreck. Oh, I wouldn't say that. It's aged like a good wine. Gourmet cheese. Preserves grandma used to make. Hmm. It would be a novelty. How does it run? Well, I can tell you one thing. It, uh, it... Yes? Out with it, son. The... Ah, the block's cracked. The block? All the way through. Let me open the hood so you can see. Hmm. What else? Where do you want me to start? The tires, for example. Good rubber? Shot. Dried up. Starting to crack. Still got some tread. Might be good for a while. A while? This car's living on borrowed time. Taking that into account, what's she worth? I mean, assuming some idiot wanted a really lousy car to use for a gag or something. So the photographers would put his picture in the paper. Maybe 500? 500 bucks? Well, it is unusual. Say, 600? Why not 300? What? You don't understand. You see, this is a bad car. It's a lemon, unsweetened. Why, you dirty dog. You clever, wheeling and dealing son of a gun. But that's the truth, the absolute truth. <laughs> I've heard all kinds of routines, all kinds. Nothing gets past Luther Grimbley. But you, clever little cookie you, this is the old reverse English, isn't it? The old twister roof. No, sir, that's not it at all. Why, you sharp shooting devil. You knew I wanted it, didn't you? You knew as soon as I laid eyes on it. Something that would stand out. Tell you what, I'll give you 250 for it, mainly on account of its good politics to drive an old chestnut. The retired folks, the ones in the rest homes, they'll see that and it'll warm the cockles of their hearts. Make people realize I'm not getting rich off them. <laughs> that I'm one of them. You want to give me 250 simoleons? Make that 225. Huh? I didn't notice the dent in the fender. Oh. Deal? Two and a quarter? As is, no strings. You better trot out the strings right now, buddy boy. Trot out those strings. I want to know what I'm getting. Let's see here once. You're offering me two and a quarter cash as is, no returns. But... But what? Uh, well... It's haunted. Haunted? This car is haunted? Yeah. Yes, sir. How is it haunted? Uh, whoever owns it has to tell the truth. What do you mean by the truth? The whole truth, the real Megillah, and the only way you can stop telling the truth is to sell the car to someone else. How about this baby over here? That's no baby, it's a great-grandfather. Hasn't got any transmission, no differential, no rear end at all. It's shot by a firing squad. By golly, that's the goods, isn't it? You really do have to tell the truth. So that's it. That's the reason for the backwards pitch. You don't have a choice. You have to tell it like it is. So what about the Model A? What about it? Well, in spite of the fact that, that it's haunted, it's still a swell conversation piece. For some people, maybe, but not for honest Luther Grimbley. Buddy boy, I'm in politics. That's the trough I feed from. And when you tell me I gotta start telling the truth all the time, holy Hannah, don't you get it? I couldn't make another speech. I couldn't run for dog catcher. Why don't you sell it to Boss Ryan over at the 12th Ward? I'd love to hear him lay it on the line one time, just once. <laughs> or the mayor, 
Why not the mayor? Why don't you sell it to City Hall? If he comes by, maybe I will. I guess that would really shake things up. You don't have to wait for the mayor. There's bigger fish in the sea. In fact, here comes one right now. Where? The stretch limo. Got his whole entourage with him. Wants to see how we do things over here. Been following me on my rounds all morning. Who is he? The Emir of Ugusistan. Most powerful potentate in his corner of the world. Give him a deal. Get you more publicity than money can buy. If you catch my drift. Get the camera set up. Over here is good. What's all the equipment for? We're eyeball news team. Give me a sound level. Where's the mic? Use the clip on. Hey, what do you fellas think you're doing? It's all right, Irv. It's for TV. TV? Yeah, six o'clock news. Uh, are you the manager? No, no, I am. Harvey Hennicutt's cut rate auto sales, where the deals just keep on coming. So long, Amir. I gotta get back to work. You know how it is. Keeping democracy running. The Amir is grateful for your hospitality. Anytime. That's the American way, huh, boy? <laughs> you better believe it. Why don't you boys stick around a while? The Amir is due in Manhattan shortly. Uh, stand back, please. Uh, may we have a few words? No interviews. If you can, roll down the back window. We can get a shot. Will you ask him? Alas, I am only the translator. Now he must go over his speech. Say, is anybody hungry? I could order out. What does he like on his pizza? Mr. Hennicutt? That's me, Harvey Hennicutt. Hennicutt's cut-rate auto sales, at your service. The Amir expresses interest in one of your automobiles. Oh, he does, huh? Well, why don't you step into my office so we can, uh, discuss it in private? Here, I'll get the door for you. Get a shot. Follow them inside, handheld. Oh, no. Sorry, boys. All negotiations are strictly off-limits, especially to the press. But I'll give you an interview just as soon as we're finished. Irv, get everybody an ice-cold Coca-Cola. Open the machine up. On the house. Sure, boss. Coming right up. All he has to do is sign right here. You can take it out to the car if he doesn't want to come in. Everything seems to be in order. Go ahead, then. I'll get the keys. Do you need a pen? Mr. Hennicutt. Yes? It's your motives I'm concerned about. Don't worry about my motives. I'm not trying to cheat you. Of course. But it is an example of Mr. Henry Ford's great contribution to your country. The production line. Quite brilliant, really. That is why the Emir desires it for his collection. And yet... Your price seems overly modest. Look, I bought the car for 60 bucks. I'm selling it for 60 bucks. That's all. I don't want to make any profit. It wouldn't seem right for such a special car and a special buyer. Take your time. Talk it over with your boss. That is not necessary. I am authorized to accept your terms, Mr. Hennicutt. The Emir is addressing the United Nations in a mere three hours. Then we've got a deal? Cash is acceptable in American currency. Is it? I've got the papers right here. Now, this is the bill of sale, this is the transfer of title, and this is the registration. Have your boss sign all three of them on the dotted line. I am empowered to sign for him. Oh, no, no. The boss has to sign. You dig what I'm saying? Only the boss himself can sign. It's the way we do things in the U.S. of A. Ah, a memento, is that it? You are a autograph collector? Yeah, something like that. In that case, I'll take the papers to him. You do that, and tell him he's one lucky dog. What? I mean, you got a million bucks worth of propaganda, you know that? All you have to do is tell your people back home that this is the kind of car the average American drives. Nothing too rich. We believe in equality. And truth, most of all, the truth. Anything else doesn't go here. You tell your boss that. He keeps one copy, you bring the rest back to me, and that'll do it. Your boss will be the new owner of the car. In a minute, he can drive it right off if he wants. Drive it right off. <laughs> I will tell him. Operator, 
Long distance. The New York Times. No, wait a minute. Listen, operator, can I ask you a question? If an American citizen has something important in the way of news, I mean real important, that could affect foreign policy, well, who should he call? That is, look, just get me the White House, will you? And tell him I'd like to talk to the president right away. I guarantee he'll want to hear this. It's important. Couldn't happen, you say? Far-fetched? Way out? Possibly. But the next time you buy an automobile, remember this. If it looks as though it went through the Battle of the Marne and the seller is willing to throw in an arm, not to mention one of his legs, be cautious. And once you sign the bill of sale, be particularly careful about telling your boss that you've missed work because of your grandmother's funeral when you were actually at a baseball game, watching a doubleheader with the Dodgers. Because you'll be the proud possessor of an instrument of truth, manufactured and distributed by a dealer with exclusive rights to a territory called the Twilight Zone. We'll return to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind, a journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, You'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. The Whole Truth, starring Henry Rollins with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Jeff Lupiton, Doug James, Christian Stolte, Elizabeth Lido, Bernie Landis, David Darlow, Anish Jetmalani, Carl Amari, Vince Amari, and Ellie Weingart. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Audio editing, sound design, Foley effects, and mix for the Twilight Zone radio dramas are by Cerny American creatives Craig Lee, Michael Slaybach, Bob Benson, and Jason Rizzo. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. <laughs>